Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you might be. I am Nicole BC, and you, you and us have everything. everything. This is one of my least favorite conversations only because I've been having it for 20 years. I think that's pretty accurate. Hi, I'm old. The question about social media and business. Do I have to have a social media presence? Do I need a social media profile? Do I need a band? Band. <laughs> we'll get into that. Do I need a business profile or a personal brand? What kind of branding? Blah, 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 blah. Right? And okay. I was at a dinner party the other night. That's what actually inspired this conversation with a whole bunch of entrepreneurs. And there was one who I don't know much about their business, but they're older than me, which tells you something. And they were saying, well, we've proven the theory social media doesn't work. And I had to say, no, sir, that is actually not what we've proven at all. If anything, we've proven that social media works over and over and over again and in a thousand different ways. Like... I know people who have made millions and millions and millions of dollars on social media. I know artists and creators that have built millions and millions of fans on social media. I know people who have not needed to work anymore. I know people who have used information they've found on social media in order to leverage their own success in their day-to-day lives so they don't have to work anymore. It's pretty fucking incredible what it can do. Now, am I a fan of social media? Have I enjoyed every minute being on social media? Have I tried a million different things and a lot of different platforms with a ton of different strategies to figure social media out? Have I gone dark on social media? Have I been way overzealous on social media? Yes. Yes to all of those things. So what I want to talk about today is my own personal experience. I have created a lot of success for other businesses and for myself. I say that like a question because... Oftentimes when I set goals for myself and I vision what my desired end result is going to look and feel like, the actual details of that realization in real time are really different. So I have gotten a lot of followers. I have made a lot of money. It didn't feel the way that I expected or and or it didn't look the way that I expected when it happened. And all that was was information. Do I want to keep doing it this way? Do I want to try something different, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm sure I'm going to share some stories about success. But by the end of this video, my friend, what I hope to empower you with is the ability to code change, to switch characters, to write your own movie and star in a script that allows you to use this tool because that's what it is. It is a tool so that you can use this tool to fix whatever problem it is you have in that moment. It's like a Swiss army knife, right? Like use your imagination, my friend. You could probably build a freaking house with it or you could just like cut a stick. I don't, you know, like to each their own. And also like you could, there's a wine opener, you know, like (laughs) you can change out what it is and how you're using it in order to get what you want. So I'm not a big one on complaining. I think it's it's kind of putting this like really bad mojo out there. And if you don't like it, that's cool, man. Like, don't like it. But talking about it, feeding that beast, giving it energy is probably going to bring more of whatever that thing is that you don't like, even if it's social media. I also think like you have agency, my friend. So what is it that you don't specifically like? And how can you flip that so that you don't have to deal with that? anymore, like if for no nothing else. So, you know, while I'm talking, think about some of the things that jump out at you the most while you're using these platforms. And one of the things I'm going to challenge you with towards the end is what are we not doing anymore? So I'm just going to plant that little seed right here. I did want to share, like using social media for me started at the very, very beginning of my music career. And I've told this story before, so bear with me if you've heard it, but I started in grassroots marketing, working for a really, really, really cool organization. I will forever and always credit them with my comeuppance, right? Super independent, super DIY, super grassroots with like obsessive fans. 
And this is the late 90s. So what we were asking, we were physically sending in the mail, sending them posters. I would roll up the posters. I would put some stickers in there. And I would send these fans posters, depending on where they lived and if there was a show or an album release, right? I would ask these fans to physically walk around and put these posters up on telephone poles and cafes and bars. And then they would take analog pictures using cameras and pay to get those photos developed and then send them to me. (laughs) Okay. So this was a pretty intense endeavor for everybody. It cost money. And in exchange, they would get a free ticket to the show, maybe a t-shirt, right? So much time and effort for, in my opinion, very little payoff, but it, it gave these people this sense of connection and it brought them into this community that they couldn't otherwise organize. And we would have little events for all of these different people in all of these different places. And eventually they started organizing them themselves. That's how I cut my teeth with stuffing envelopes and sending merch out. And I, like the, when I wanted to actually make money, I was doing that for eight hours a day, three to four days a week, right? It was, it was intense. So when MySpace came around... And I could post an event as in like this band is playing at this venue in this city on this day and everybody could see that. It was a godsend. When people could start taking digital photos and upload that and then email me, it was amazing. It also became very overwhelming very quickly. It took me like 10 years to get over the trauma of opening up my email account and having 500 emails in there every morning. And that was just the the beginning of my day. That wasn't even my job, right? And so... I very quickly discovered the power of social media. When I started managing my own bands and had my own record label and my own studio, I would spend all night putting up posters and going to record stores and calling record stores and physically sending them the CDs. That was not all, that was also not my full time job. That's just what I did in the hours when I wasn't working and I was supposed to be sleeping in order to build a brand presence in the market, especially in markets that we were not local. So, again, when this tool came around that allowed me to share events with as many people as I felt like were on these platforms, and I could do that for free instantly in like an hour, it It was amazing and I loved it. And you could immediately create these communities and you could see people exchanging stories and exchanging live recordings and letting other fans stay at their house while these bands were touring. Like it was amazing. And with that energy, I was able to build really large profiles, really amazing brands for these artists and it created sustainable careers. That's where sustainability became such an important thread for me. Because the point was not that these were flash in the pan artists. They weren't just releasing a single that went viral on TikTok. These were people that were building a livelihood and a lifestyle that could support them and their families. And eventually all of the other people that were working for them who wanted to also have a particular lifestyle and be able to support other people in their lives. So it was this very intentional and important endeavor. And especially for me, I mean, it was my everything, right? So... I've always had that bias. Like I would much prefer this than having to spend all night taping up posters on telephone poles. And eventually that became like not even a thing you can do. And now all of the wall space and restaurants is like paid for in advance. And people build businesses around it, right? Like that's also fucking cool. When it came to me and now needing to brand and message myself, I'm not going to lie to you, my friend. It has taken me a long time and it will continue to take me as long as it takes to figure it out. Because you know what? I'm changing. My services are changing. My people are changing. And these platforms, y'all, they're going to be changing because what they're doing is adapting to you and how you're consuming and what you need and the problems that you need solved in this moment. They're also adapting to their own goals and profitability and the people they're trying to support. So these platforms are businesses, And you are engaging on these platforms in a business exchange, again, to solve a problem. So you get to be in charge, my friend. We all know we are the product, especially if it's a free platform. Social media is a phenomenal tool. So then the question is, is how are you going to shift the way that you're engaging with it to make it work for you? Because I do believe you can be incredibly successful without social media, but here's the caveat, right? You have to have an audience. 
I mean, unless you're truly creating for nobody else to engage with whatever it is you put out there, like literally put out into the universe, not like out there for them to see, right? And like, brava. I, I can't tell you how many artists would approach me and ask for my support. And I was like, let's be clear about something. If I'm helping you, that means you need to be showing this to a lot more people and in a way that is ultimately profitable because that's the exchange here. I can I can sit down with you and have an amazing meal or a cup of coffee or an exchange of some sort where I download like how to create a system of your own creative process that will absolutely empower and inspire you forever. But the second you want to create an exchange around it or you're going to get butt hurt if people don't respond to it, that is different. That is work, my friend. (laughs) That is capitalism, right? Like, so this is from the lens that you do do want to exchange with other people on some way, shape, or form. And you have expectations for your own input. And these tools can be very, very useful, even if you never want to make a freaking dollar from them, even if you don't care if it's only one person, right? So I'm going to get into all of that. Like I I think some of the ways that you can actively and immediately use these tools to better everything that it is that you're doing in this particular exchange and work, right? So let's address the things that are not okay about these platforms, right? The fake news, the viral misinformation, And I can't tell you how many people send me shit all day long every day. And the first thing that I will do before I even have a reaction is I fact check it. It takes me two seconds, right? Like just pop that into a Google search or uh, Brave is the platform I use. Like, and just see, like, where did the, do I think this is a reputable news source? So on and so forth, right? Have your own little filters. But if all of this like outlandish, hyperbolic, clickbait, brouhaha gets you, ignore it. (laughs) Like, don't follow those people. Let your people know, don't send me this shit. Like, or just scroll, keep on scrolling. Find your people. If anyone's sending you stuff that you find particularly triggering, I might suggest that's not your people. I used to think that, and this was something at that dinner party that I was talking about. He's like, you know, social media and online platform does not build human connection. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That's also just not true. If you're experiencing issues, that does not make them systemic. That makes them your issue. Now you can solve that. That can, you can look at that like it's a challenge to be overcome or you can keep complaining about it. Uh, I don't think you're watching this at this point because you want to keep complaining about it. You're probably really curious. Like how do I circumnavigate? How do I get around what is this perceived obstacle? All of my friends are internet friends now. (laughs) Like, not to say that I met them on the internet, but I I move around a lot. I use technology to stay in touch. And I will tell you, a lot of my closest people, especially in business, are internet friends. I met them on the internet. I met them in community. I met them on a social media platform, especially a social media platform that I was talking shit about. I've moved and migrated platforms along with them. Like, find your people. And I guarantee you, I don't care how weird you are. Your people are out there and they are online and they're doing some freaky deaky shit, my friend, and they are just waiting for you to join them. But here's the thing that I think is insane about these platforms is the level of access and agency they provide. I mean, one of these things the platforms are doing is now exposing every single war, atrocity, tragedy, hideous thing that's on this earth. And you might find that really triggering. This isn't an episode about how to deal with the triggers on social media, but what I will say is you are not putting your head in the sand if you ignore that stuff on your social media platforms. And if you are being triggered, it's probably because there's something you'd like to do about that. And there are a million different ways that you can make a difference in your world. And first and foremost is taking care of yourself. I have a lot of different episodes about that. I will point those to you at the end of this. And a lot of just different support resources for you. First and foremost, me. Hi. <laughs> I would love to support you. Hello at NicoleBZ.com. Get in the loop. We can chat. So from there, you, the access and agency that social media can provide to people who have never been able to afford an education, 
learn how to build equity and invest in either a property or their own security, connect with other people, connect with mentors. I mentor a ton of people at no monetary exchange because they found me through these platforms and I've created a space for that on these platforms, right? So you can get a PhD level education for free now. You can move finances around. You can get work. Like you don't even need to be able to leave your bed to now be able to empower yourself. And I actually do give these platforms full credit for that. There are jobs and industries that didn't exist when I was your age. <laughs> like that's insane. And one thing I do want to say is you don't have to spend any money on experts. Please, please hear me when I say this. I have paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay people who have promised me results because they are experts. They have PhDs in social media. And here's the thing, my friend, these algorithms and these platforms and this world are changing so quickly. There are no experts. You know everything. You know, I was going to say that, right? You are an expert. You know your people, you know your business, you know your situation, you know your day to day, you know what you're comfortable with, you know what you're not. Like none of these people are going to give you anything you can't get yourself. They might fast track it. For sure. If you're someone like me, you're super duper busy. You have a lot of different things going on. You will pay people to actually do things for you because it saves you time. That output is much more um, rewarded by their input, right? Like I'm, I'm 10xing my results because I'm literally duplicating myself and getting support. I'll get a little bit more into that later on about how you can really leverage that because there are some pretty interesting expectations some business owners go into when hiring social media quote unquote experts. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this one out there. I think that's where a lot of our bad attitudes can come from. We've had a bad experience, especially with an expert. I had the worst, the worst experience ever. Uh, I think some of you watching are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm going to leave this here. Just know, like if you're spreading gossip and judgment and blame and shame, you might be the problem with social media. I said it. Okay, so let's get back to one of the things that social media does beautifully, and that is mass updating. If you have more than a couple hundred customers, clients, buyers, stakeholders, connections, people in your space, it's very challenging to call all of them or text all of them or email all of them. And even if you're doing that regularly, we all know how distracted and overwhelmed we are with information. Social media is a pretty great place to keep a standing update and mass inform your people. And lastly, before we kind of get into like the nitty gritty of how to shift energy and things like that around social media and how to really make it work for you and how to actually feel good about doing it and how like most importantly to get what you want, right? Your purpose and intention for using social media isn't just going to change. It's going to change depending on what it is exactly that you're trying to do. So just know before you do anything on it, whether you're rolling over in bed in the morning and being like, I just want to like fucking dis disassociate and disconnect and I don't want to today or whatever it is. And also, I'm sorry, and maybe don't get on social media and that energy ever. But if this is a habit that you're bringing awareness to, that's it. That's your purpose. That's your why. Oh, this is that thing I do every morning. I don't even know if this is the thing I should be doing. I'm going to feel into that as I scroll before I even like get my fucking life together. If you're doing it to learn something, if you're doing it because you're bored, if you're doing it because you're trying to stalk somebody that you have feelings about, if you're doing it because you're going to compare yourself to other people, if you're doing it to sell, if you're doing it to learn, if you're so on and so forth, right? Like know why you are about to open that app. If for no other reason to just simply tune into how often am I opening these apps? When you get incredibly intentional and you just, it's just a pause. It's a brief beat before you dot, 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 whether that's scroll, whether that's click, whether that's comment, whether that's DM, whether that's screenshot, whether that's save, like just that. Okay. And getting an understanding of what, what it is you're doing and why it's, that's it. I just gave away the ending. I didn't mean to do that. That was supposed to be saved for the end, <laughs> but I promise you that's actually going to shift everything. Okay, so now, how do we actually make this work for us in this moment? Sell your way. And I already felt all of your cackles go up and be like, I'm not a salesperson. I'm really bad at messaging. I don't know how to use social media. None of my stuff is working anymore. I used to get this and now I don't get that. Everybody is noticing 
how drastically these platforms are changing. And I'm just going to hit pause on that for a second. Just recognize these platforms are businesses. They have a bottom line. They employ a lot of people and they're doing what they need to do in the best interest of their business. Now you might think they're evil and they're egregores and they're everything wrong with the world. How are you participating on these platforms? Don't do that. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that shit. I recognize there's a certain level of presence. I think businesses and brands and um, people who are expecting this exchange with others to have. I don't, I don't predict to know exactly what it is that is though. So I create presence in a way that feels really easy for me and across the platforms that I think if someone wants to go like, what the fuck is BZ about? They're going to find me on that platform and that's going to give them enough of a taste to go deeper if they want. It's like this super subtle invitation and I'm not, I'm not all that worried about if you want to open it up, read it and accept the invite, right? And that's just kind of where I'm at with it right now. That has changed wildly for me over the years depending on what it is I am trying to do. But the reason I say that is I believe we're all salespeople. Like you talk yourself into getting out of bed every morning. You talk yourself into the outfit you're going to wear and the food you're going to eat and what order you're going to do your routine in. And if you're going to be earlier, if you're going to be late or why that's okay, so on and so forth, right? You are selling yourself before you sell anything to anyone ever. And I do think when we get onto these social media platforms, we're selling as in like, we're selling our energy to the universe in exchange for this, this, whoa, I just hit the mic, journal this record of creation. I I think a lot of individuals are just simply like keeping track. That's a sell to me. And so if that word triggers you, I totally get it. I use that word and I use a lot of words very intentionally because I think about everything from a business perspective. And sell to me is the activity of me sharing information with you with an intention of creating an impact. And it's an energy. It's a vibe, right? It's the moment. I watch this. I've been watching a lot of social media strategy and 2024 stuff in preparation for this episode. And the one thing I took away from that was like, no one knows what the fuck is happening. Everyone's just talking about what they're doing right now that seems to be fun. The results are all over the place. And do you, boo? Like that was my biggest takeaway, listening to all of these different experts across all of these different platforms and experience levels and you know, whether they're like a digital agency and this is their actual job or they're just an influencer that's obsessed with trends and forecasting. So sell your way. Show up in a way that feels real for you. And that might be no makeup, fresh, hand holding. That might be perfectly curated scenes and sets and images. It it doesn't matter. If it feels real to you, that's how people are going to respond to it. If you feel like you're faking it, if you feel like this is bullshit, if you feel like this is something to do because I fucking told you to on this podcast, like, I mean, firstly, you know me, I'm going to say test everything, but like... I know when I have a bad attitude about something, it's just not going to work. That's like by design. I don't want it to work. Hence the bad attitude. So show up and sell in a way that feels good. And if you don't know what that means, this is where you really get to test it and to practice. Love what you create. Create it for you first. I create my, I create this stuff. But when I listen back to it, full disclosure, I fucking love it. (laughs) Like I have all sorts of feels and doubts and imposter syndrome and whatever that come up pretty much every syllable that comes out of my mouth. But I trust that you're here. You're still listening for a reason. And this jibber jabber has taken me 25 years to come up with of experience and failure and success. And it's like, let's just have fun. And this is just going to find you in the exact moment when you need it. And if you don't, you're just going to skip to the next thing. No harm, no foul, right? I love helping. I love advising. I joke around how if everybody just did what I told them to do, the world would be an amazing place. But also like I need to practice that because if I were an expert at that and it worked all of the time, every time, uh, well, the world would be a completely different place, right? So prove it to yourself over and over and over and over and over and over again. Show up for you. Show yourself you can be safe. 
when you switch your why into things you can control, you can prove your success to you every single time you do anything. And that, my friend, is the work. That is the practice. That is how you start to create not only fire content, but fire content that connects and inspires and makes everybody feel like you're talking just to them. I cannot tell you how many people, the number one piece of feedback I get from all of these is I thought you made this just for me. And, or I can't believe you put that episode out on that day because that is exactly what I was trying to figure out that morning. I create these episodes sometimes two months out, sometimes even longer, depending on like if something goes wackadoodle in my schedule, it's like an old episode laying around. It finds you exactly when you need to. I have proved that over and over and over again to myself. I don't doubt it. Even when like my ego brain shows up and is like, this is bullshit. Or I try to compare myself to people who spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their social media every year. Like prove to yourself you can do it. And and here's the thing. I think we've been talking a lot about celebrating, like celebrate every win and like every post and every like and blah, blah, blah. Okay. If that's your vibe, like if you really, if like you're, you know, I find like, dramatic people. And I don't say that with, um, let's call them theater kids. <laughs> like The celebration is super fun for them, right? I'm all about normalizing it. Like, yeah, of course, a hundred people just liked that. Or yeah, of course, my content is fire. Like, or yeah, of course, people think that I'm making everything just for them, even though that's a thousand different people saying that. Like, I don't even need to celebrate this. This is just what I do. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for, but that's just me. As you know, I always encourage you to figure out that frequency, that experience, that look, smell, taste, sound, feel of what success means to you. And then like wallow in that, rub it all over you, blow it up your nose. (laughs) One of the challenges with social media is there are those of us that are very performance oriented. I think we can call that people pleasing. I think we can call that validate seeking, like or validation seeking. Sure, external rewards are great. But I think especially as you step into this creator role and you are proving to yourself, I am a creator. I am not just a consumer. I am here to make something, whether that's a difference or some money. I am here to make it. (laughs) It's not going to be about the validation, the numbers, the views. I The amount of people I've spoken to who are like, I got one view on my post and I literally deleted it you know, just repurpose that post. Don't do it for the validation. And this is, this is, this is actually me telling you what to do in this moment, because that's where discouragement and burnout and resentment shows up. That's why we hate social media is it's not giving us the validation that we need. And you are the only one that can validate you. You are the only one that will ever be able to recognize your efforts and know what you put into it and how much you've risked and how all the blood, sweat, and tears, right? So that's what I mean when I say prove it to yourself over and over and over again. And once you recognize the value that you bring, I know it sounds so fucking cheesy in love and light, but like once you get that, that's when it's going to start showing up externally, not the other way around. I heard this really great analogy. I'm going to give Noah Lampert credit for it in terms of the mirror, like the mirror doesn't reflect something that isn't happening here, right? Like if I don't show the mirror that I love myself and I love what I'm doing, it's not going to reflect that back. That is what social media provides you with as a mirror. If you don't believe in what you're doing and posting, you're not going to get that back from others. And I just want to remind you as well, They're saying at least 40% of most social media platforms, participants now are bots. Again, that goes back to their own bottom lines. They need a certain level of participation and engagement on these platforms now for them to stay viable. And so this isn't some fucking conspiracy theory and like the, the world is being run by like QAnon or the Illuminati or whatever. This is just business. And so like all of those people whose attention you're trying to get might just be AI bots. So use social media in a way that documents your value for you. Okay. Next, adapt. People are engaging with social media. You are engaging with social media. You are using this tool 
depending on what it is that you need, vice versa. Now, you can't predict what other people need or want. You can learn about that. You can have that conversation. That's actually a really powerful way of creating connection and, and, and demonstrating your value to others is by simply asking, like, how can I support you? Like, what is it that you need? That's, that's, I've heard a lot of marketers debate that. You should tell your audience what you need. Your audience tells you what you need. There is no one right answer. It's depending on you and your brand. I come at it from more of like, I tell people what they need. <laughs> I create my content because this is what I want to talk about and think about. I'm not doing a ton of market research out there. I will then go and use tools just in terms of like the, the structure around it, the titles, the thumbnails, some of the hashtags, et cetera. But that's based on my own creation. Not what I'm not trying to predict what I think the market's going to do or what people need or whatever. If I'm not excited about it, if I'm not having fun, if it's not adventurous, excellence, freedom, you know, I'm not doing it. So uh, that's my own recipe for success. Hopefully you're able to pull some things out of this conversation, this very one-sided conversation to figure out your recipe for success. And it's because when we do it in a way that we recognize is going to be adaptable, is going to be responsive, is going to recognize that this is forever and always changing. There won't be just one right way for me, let alone for everybody else. That gives us the ability to practice. And that is how you become a master. The only people I have ever seen build an immediate audience with immediate success on social media are those that have come from digital marketing jobs. And now you can get a degree in it, right? Like they that's what they do. That's their skill set. And they're able to sell and message effectively on these platforms because they've spent 10 years doing it just for somebody else. That's it. Everybody else is creating in a way that feels so authentically magic to them. It is like a magnet. They are, they are the flame to which the moths cannot get away from. So use social media. And this is where we'll get into like the how, right? Use it to test, use it to practice, use it to learn. You can test your own messaging. I mean, like test and practice almost go hand in hand with each other, but it is through testing your own verbiage, the words that you're using, the energy that you're showing up with, your own purpose and your why, everything we've talked to you about, like, don't believe me, test it. See if it shifts things for you. This is how you're going to start to feel more comfortable and how you feel like you're going to actually be able to turn this tool on so that it is, you know, instead of using a screwdriver, you're using a hammer drill. <laughs> like That's only through practice and through testing and knowing that that's the tool that you're going to want to use in this particular moment and how to use it most effectively. This is where you can create campaigns, where you can connect with people. Like, and, and again, we are continually testing. This is how you can be a fly on the wall. There's no shame in lurking, getting in other people's communities. Please don't steal things, obviously. This isn't about appropriation and copying. But you can absolutely, you've heard me talk about modeling. Find 10 creators online that are doing things in a way that you find really inspiring and ask yourself, what are they doing well? Don't, what don't I like about what it is that they're doing? That is going to give you a really strong launch pad for creating a strategy that works for you. So here's some fun ways to approach it, but we're going to start with just, again, fucking reality check. Stop blaming social media. That's the first step. If this is social media is the enemy, like stop, just stop, just walk away and figure out how you're going to connect with people in order to share what it is that you're doing, if that's your goal. If not, I really don't think you're watching this, but just stop. Stop externalizing your fucking issues. <laughs> that's a big statement. <laughs> but like stop externalizing the problem that is social media. You know what we have proven? We've proven that millions of people can create wildly successful projects, creations, endeavors, connections, businesses, livelihoods using this tool. And it 100% creates human connection. It does not replace it. I'm not saying it improves on it, but it absolutely opens an av avenue for connection, learning, discovery, improvement, and success. It just fucking does. We see that all day, every day. If you haven't found that for you, that is an amazing opportunity. If that's something you would like to create, start with that. I see this as being a useful tool. I don't know how to use it for me in any moment yet. Let's play with one tool 
in one moment and figure out how to get there, right? A friend of mine is a incredible winter sports athlete. At points has been semi-professional. Long story short, her husband was on a social on a social media on a snowboarding trip and did not come home. That, I mean, we're talking about you're snowmobiling, you're in the middle of the snow fields, it is pitch black, uh, no one knows where you are. Um, they do have uh, geo-tracking devices, but for whatever reason, this wasn't triggering. She got onto social media, she got onto a platform uh, at about two in the morning. The next day at dawn, there were a couple hundred people in a parking lot to go and look for him. These were not professionals. These were not state or city or employees. These were the members of the snowmobiling community that were online that rallied. And within a couple hours, he was found and he would have died, saved a life. And that's anecdotal. That is one person's experience, but I continually go back to that when I get shitty about social media, like social media saved my friend's life. So we can look at all of the other horrible things that are happening, or we can look at that example. That's your choice, right? So get clear on your values. You knew that was coming. I don't think I've recorded an episode where I don't talk about your values and then show up in that way. Consume content in that way. Like completely envelop yourself in your own little social media verse with your values. It will change your experience. I promise you that. I'd like for any naysayers that might still be out there to just tell me another tool that will allow you to build connection globally, immediately, without boundaries, that provides a PhD level education for free. Okay? So I'm open at me, hello at NicoleBZ.com. I would love for you to comment wherever you are experiencing this. I would really love for you to rate this episode because I switched platforms and all of my ratings are gone. So (laughs) you'd be surprised how few people are actually rating this. Uh, Please, 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 based on the listenership, go rate, go rate yourself. So let go of everything up until this point. We've talked a lot about that, all of the old energy. And really, honestly, anytime you're trying to create a level up, it's going to mean you abandon everything that was. That sounds a little scary or triggering. That's cool. There's probably a different episode for that. (laughs) I think it's called level up. But for real, if you like, just leave that stuff behind and just be willing to play. So I'm going to give you a little homework assignment right here, right now. Imagine, literally close your eyes. And imagine what it could look like if you used one of these tools successfully. Are you posting every day? Are you doing voiceovers on a picture that's been in your phone for a year? Is someone doing it for you? Like really pretend I am not asking you to believe this could be true. I am asking you to pretend that it is and give yourself an opportunity to, in your mind's eye, see what quote unquote successful social media usage looks like for you. Okay. Now, how does that feel? When you, when you see yourself in that imagined moment using social media successfully, how do you feel while you're using it? Think about those words and those emotions physically How do you feel? Don't describe the situation. I'm posting every day. I'm getting thousands of likes and comments and views. I'm getting hundreds of people joining. No, 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 no. I see myself calm. I feel calm. I feel excited. Do not focus on the external validation. We've already talked a little bit about that, but what I'm willing to allow (laughs) is that feeling of how that validation feels and because you can give that to yourself, my friend. So we're just imagining and pretending there is a time and space and experience for you somewhere in the future where this is a successful tool. And in this game of make-believe, what does it look like? Now you can describe the details of this situation. I like the details only because that helps me reverse engineer. Some of us are really specific when it comes to our goal setting. That's cool. Some of us just were like, calm. I just want to feel calm. That's cool too. Both are going to get you closer to this desired end result, right? And also both are something you can absolutely create and then use this tool as soon as you open your eyes and you come back to this present moment, right? 
So you're here. You're still listening, my friend. This is the sign you've been looking for. You can make social media work for you, I promise. Do you have to? Absolutely not. But there's a reason you're curious, right? There's a reason you're here. So make it super duper small. Start minuscule. I just want a presence. Just go reserve that URL. Like just go make sure that if or when you do decide that you're going to go full bore and be on every single platform everywhere, like you've got your your handle that you want, you know? Stop comparing yourself to others and where they're at and shoulda, woulda, coulda, and what if I had started and blah, blah, blah. Just right now, do your thing. P.S. If those people are upsetting you or you don't, I don't, I don't pretend to be better than comparisonitis or jealousy or envy, my friend. But I just tune those things out of my experience. Like I just don't engage with that level of content or creator. And I don't think that's putting my head in the sand. It doesn't show up for me like I'm actually jealous. I'm not a very, I'm actually not competitive at all. How it shows up for me is judgment. Judgment is one of my things that I've been working on for a really, really, really long time. It's mostly in here and about this. But obviously, if it's happening here, it's going to be reflected out there, right? The mirror. And so I judge people's integrity, authenticity. I judge their malalignment with my values. I don't, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll like, and this is where my kind of like on spectrum four arrows go. I will then go and like reverse engineer all of their data and numbers to prove to myself that they're liars. And so that's where my comparison items kind of shows up. And so if I find somebody who's bragging about their income, who's making outlandish promises, who's selling those magic pills and silver bullet systems, like I just don't follow them anymore. I also don't follow, follow like hyperbolic news and um, people who use drama and pain and suffering to create attention and influence. So, okay, that, that I will get off my soapbox. Thanks. This was not designed to be a tutorial, right? This was all about an energetic shift. And you can see right there, like what I just walked you through, that's me recognizing my energy around a situation and then taking that beat, taking that pause and consciously shifting it. Now I can get onto socials completely neutral. I can post every single day. Here's where I'll get into my strategy. So I've been calling it my blitzkrieg. Again, I worked with an expert who, whoa, did I just take, shake the camera? I, um, who, yeah, was out of alignment. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. And, and it, you know what I ended up doing is going back to my very old school approach in like the mid 2000s when all of these tools were super new because I do think we're in the middle of like a huge evolution of all of these different platforms as they explore their monetization models, right? Like they all recognize they need to make a hell of a lot more money if they want to stay competitive as all of these new platforms start to launch. And that's another thing. Like we've got web three decentralized social media platforms. We've got private paywalled protected social media platforms. We've got tons of different ways of engaging without images or without audio or only images and audio, right? Like we can, we can be using the blockchain to, to protect our assets. Like it's to me, since, um, Apple gave users the opportunity to no longer be tracked by cookies, the whole landscape changed dramatically. And that happened a couple of years ago, but we're seeing the onflow of that now. So I don't really know what works. And when I don't know what works, I remove myself entirely from it. And I do a throw shit at the wall and see what sticks strategy. I've been in there for six months. I know what sticks now. And so it's been about just creating as much content as possible and putting it on all platforms at the exact same time. Because from my, my opinion, and, and I've tried and tested this enough, if you do the exact same thing in the exact same way at the exact same time, and the only thing you're changing is platform, that's going to show you audience, right? And then you can start tinkering with titles, with keywords, with messaging. That's going to show you what verbiage you use, the energy of the words that you're using. Then you can start tinkering with colors and images and branding um, visuals. It doesn't kind of matter what order you do this. And I do think you should start with like cross platform and then you should pick either the like copy and words if that's your thing or like the visuals if that's your thing. Start tinkering and you're, you're going to be able to start to predict in spaces like succinct spaces what turns people on and what turns people off. Both are equally powerful. So recognize there is another way. The only thing we've proven is these platforms work. Okay. Like they just do. Now, if you haven't discovered how to do that for you, this is your opportunity. And everything that's worked up until now, 
doesn't apply anymore. It's a completely fresh start. That's kind of an exciting place to be if we choose for it to be so. And yes, many of people are lamenting the income and the bottom line that they had developed from these platforms. And that's business, my friend. You know, I've joked since the forced closures that small businesses experienced in 2020 that these types of economic roller coasters, these soaring highs and plummeting lows for a small business, especially a micro business, that's just a Tuesday. <laughs> like, you know, the city decides they want to do construction and you might see your profits drop 100% for a few months or even a few years. You know, if you go into the restaurant industry, it's like a two to five year runway that a lot of those restaurants and restaurateurs plan on. They're continually rebranding, reinventing their menu, going to new locations because that industry, people love a new opening of a new restaurant. And then after two years, they're over it or five years or whatever. Sure, there's your institutional restaurants that have been around for a hundred years, but I guarantee you, my friend, their clientele has changed. Their income levels have changed. And if their menu hasn't changed, <laughs> like um, their staff has, right? Their management has, like getting clear on what works best for you. I got a little away from, from the point of this. That's the secret to success. And these platforms are simply tools that you will allow you to leverage your success in any way, shape or form that feels good to you. So just pay attention to that. Does it feel good? Keep doing that. Thank you for being here. Um, that was longer than I expected. I had a lot to say about that. I've been thinking about this a lot because so many people have been asking me, do I need to be on social media? Which is a conversation I used to have a lot in like 2018, 2019. And I would tell people, absolutely not. You do need a certain audience level size, I think, to be able to just completely ignore social media because people have to find you. Again, assuming that's why you're here. You, you want people to be able to find you. Um, the only people I know who ha are able to just completely ignore social media and have no presence either are like spiritual influencers that don't need people, people who are like independently wealthy, who don't need money, or people who have already built up a large a large amount of social capital, whatever that looks like for them. And they are able to then leverage that capital in ways that exclude social media. So um, anything is possible, my friend. You get to do whatever the hell you want. Just ask yourself how you want to do that today, right now, right? So uh, hello at NicoleBZ.com. I would love to answer any questions that you have. I'd love to build out a whole episode for you. I am a projector. I respond very well to invitations. That's it. I love you. Thank you for being here. Bye.